Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Harm here, back with another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, we're going to add a merchant into the game, sort of like a merchant that we can interact with. We're not going to actually get into the entire sort of exchanging system and buying things from him yet in this video. We're going to try and keep it shorter and just set it up and be able to get to the merchant and interact with the merchant and start opening a menu. And we'll do all the coding for the actual transactions later. I do apologize for the lack of frequency of these videos. I will be trying to put out one every week. There was just an update in Blade and Soul, which is the major focus of the channel. So I want to make sure that I cover all the information from that update before moving on to different games once again. But anyway, once a week, going forward with these Unreal Engine 4 tutorials, but because I missed last week, you'll be getting two. So in today's video, we're going to look into creating like a hub world where we can reach a merchant and interact with the merchant. And then in the next video, we're going to show you how to upgrade your character stats by interacting with the merchant with the coin that we created in the last video. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you check it out. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to need is a hub world to actually do this whole exchange thing. So what we're going to do in the hub world is we're going to put a merchant that you can exchange with. And then at a later point, we're going to add in all the levels. So we're going to change the level coding basically so that instead of going from level one to two to three to four, you're going to go level one to hub world. Then from hub world, you can pick level two or level one. We'll do that all in a later video. I just want to get this NPC set up first. So anyway, to duplicate a level to create our, our level world area, you're going to want to go down to the levels menu on the bottom left that we created in an earlier video and pick any one of the levels besides title. So I'm just going to take level one, right click and duplicate. So instead of putting it as level four, we're going to call this hub world. So we know which one we're talking about when we load it. So hub world, no space, and it's going to move it over to the front. Double click on that to open it and make sure you save everything before you head into it. So in here, what we're first we're going to do is delete the enemy that's in the level. We don't want to fight any enemies in our hub world. It's our hub world. Next thing we have is the level load over here, the level one load that reloads us back into level one. And we can actually leave that because we will want to load into level one at some point. So we'll leave that over there for now. The next thing we need is an NPC to put in this area. So on our content browser, you're going to go ahead and right click this and we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this one NPCs. So once again, right click the content folder, new folder, NPC. So the NPC folder, we're going to want to put an NPC and the easiest way to get one is we're just going to copy our character player, but then delete all of the movement features that are available to that character. So head over to the character folder on the content browser on the left side of the screen, double click on it and you have your 2D side scroller character. So click on our 2D side scroller character, right click him and hit duplicate. Now what we're going to call this guy is we're going to call him NPC merchant. So we know who we're talking about An NPC merchant, click it and drag it into the NPC folder. We're going to move it there. So head back into the NPC folder and open up NPC Merchant. So the first thing we're going to want to do is head over to the viewport and you see it's got a selected animation playing. So the animation playing, we do not want to use attack. We want to change the attack animation to an idle. Let's try just the, yeah, the straight idle. Nope, that's the wrong enemy though. We don't want to do his idle. We want to do the idle of our character. So look for the idle of our character. There it is. Perfect. So we now have an idling ninja person that's going to be our NPC and he's just going to be hanging out in the level. So just hit compile and save on this. Now, it doesn't really matter that it's got all this construction graph crap going on in here, but if you want to, you can delete it all just so you really don't have any chance of controlling this character. Just go ahead and click delete on him. So now we know that this guy is basically just for straight up being used as a merchant. There's nothing in here for him to do whatsoever. So the next thing we're going to do is head back over to the viewport and we have this collision box already that we had set up for our melee attack animation on our player character. So we're going to use that same box. Instead, though, we're going to drag it to the side and we're going to make it a little bit bigger. So to make it bigger, what you're going to do is click on it. And then on the right of your screen, you see the transform option. So just go ahead and scale all of these up. So let's try making it like eight, uh, maybe a little bit more. Let's go 10. There we go. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to have it. So whenever now nah, it's actually not big enough still, let's try 15. There we go. That's plenty. So what we're going to do is we're going to have it. So when the player character walks inside of this box, a text box pops up above the merchant saying, well, hello there, welcome there, there, you know, like the typical thing you would get in like an RPG sort of game. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this box and we're going to add an event and it's going to be on component begin overlap. So if we head back over to our event graph, we will see the on component begin overlap has been dropped down here. And this is going to be the same thing we've done multiple times already in the series. So what you're going to do is check to see that the other overlapped actor is actually the character, the player character. So what we're going to do is cast to 2D side scroller character to make sure that it's the 2D side scroller character. And now at this point, we want to spawn our widget. So we don't actually have a widget yet. So we're going to compile and save this and minimize to open up back to this NPC folder. In the NPC folder, you're going to right click user interface, which already popped up here at the bottom widget blueprint. And this widget we're going to call merchant text. Oh, but can't put a space. So merchant text. 
So control S to save everything and merchant text and click in here. All right, so inside of this widget, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna start by pulling down a border. To find the border, look on the palette option and just type in border and it'll be the only thing that pops up. So drag this border in and center it on your screen, make it a decent-ish size. It doesn't really matter where you anchor it. I don't think it honestly matters where you anchor it. I could be wrong, but it, it seems to work regardless of where you anchor it. But just to be safe, I guess you could anchor it in the middle if you want, just like that. But anyway, so on the border option, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is change this color to black. So to do that, click on the border and scroll down the menu on the side over here. You're gonna see an option for brush color. It'll be this white bar right here that'll say brush color. Click on this and just drag it down to black. So now you have a black border. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is add a vertical box to the border. So in the search bar with palette up in the top left, type in vertical box and over here, you'll see that you can click on vertical box, drag that and parent it to the border. So make sure that the vertical box is inside of the border. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is add two text boxes or two text blocks, not boxes. Make sure you pick the one that says text, not text box. So click the text and drag both of them onto the vertical box. So you have this sort of cascading system and it should create something on your screen that looks like this. The first text block is going to say, welcome to the shop. So the text block, click it on the menu over here. And if you scroll over to the right side of your screen, you will see an option that says content and text. So follow the mouse. So you can see I'm clicking on this block right here. And we're gonna go ahead and type in welcome to the shop and throw an exclamation mark on that. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to center this in the box. So click the two center options. So we wanna center it horizontally as well as vertically. So make sure both of those are checked. Same thing over here, make sure this justification is sent to centered as well, down the menu a little bit. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna make this font bigger so you can actually see it. So you will see an option for font under the appearance of this box. So appearance, you've got color and opacity, and then you have font. For the font, just go ahead and click this and drag the little arrows until you get it to fill the box to a decent amount, or you can just type in numbers to whatever you want. It seems to be that 81 is working good for me. The next text block, the one over here on the left where it says this uh, little drop down menu, the hierarchy, click on the second text box that we added earlier, or text block that we added earlier. And for this one, we're gonna type in press E to enter. So press, we'll put E in little parentheses to enter. Same thing, we wanna center this one and we want to center this one. Likewise, center it over here and you're good to go. So now we have a welcome to the shop, press E to enter. The vertical box really isn't centered either. It's sort of taking up the entire thing. So we wanna center this as well. So click on our vertical box on our hierarchy over on the left side of the screen. And you'll see the two center options for horizontal alignment and vertical alignment over here on the right. So click both of those. And now we have our welcome to the shop centered on our black background. Compile and save this and head back over to our NPC merchant. So on our NPC merchant, we wanna display this widget so the player can see it. But we're actually gonna do this from the viewport. It's gonna be really slick. So go over to the viewport and you'll see our little character. So on the character viewport, what we're gonna to wanna to do is head over to the add component option and what you're gonna to wanna to look for is widget. So type widget into the search box up there and you just want this top widget option. We're gonna call this NPC text just so we have it sort of like similar to what we've been naming everything else. Compile and save. Now over on the right side of your screen, you're gonna see a tab that says user interface and you'll see an option that says widget class. Under this widget class option, click it and it'll have all of the different widgets that we've created so far in the game. So the one we want is the merchant text that we created. So as you can see, it dropped it in at a 90 degree angle rotation. So what we need to do is rotate this in the Z axis, the Z axis, in order to be able to view the widget. So head on up to the transforms up at the top of the screen and you'll see the rotation option. Z is blue, so rotate that 90 degrees and see if it goes the right way. It did go the right way, so that's cool. Next thing we wanna do is make this a little bit smaller since it's huge, so we're gonna cut it in half by clicking on the scale option. Make sure the lock option is checked over here and type in 0.5 and it halves the size of the widget. Next thing we need to do is bring the widget up in the screen, so just click on the little arrow right here and drag it so it's above our merchant dude. So it'll pop up above his head when we come up to him. And the final thing we need to do is adjust the draw size. So this draw size basically controls how big of a window it's creating. So right now it's creating a 500 by 500 block but uh, that's not right. So let's just try guessing like 1400. And that looks good enough for now. If we wanted to trim it down, we could go like 1400 by like 400. Now oh, we could probably take even more off if we wanted since it doesn't fill up. Basically just adjust these numbers until the box fills up whatever we wanted. So that is what we wanted right there. Compile and save this. So now you have a widget that's gonna pop up above your player's head, but we don't want this always on. We only want it on when you're inside of this box. 
So make sure the widget is still selected over here, this NPC text widget, and scroll down the list on the right until you get to an option that shows hidden in game. So you see rendering right here, it'll be the tab for rendering, and at the bottom it says hidden in game. We want this to be hidden in the game by default. Compile and save and head back over to the event graph. The next thing we want to do is we want to set actor hidden in game, but the thing we want to set hidden in game is actually the NPC text, and this will make a lot of sense here in a second. So just type in set hidden in game NPC text. So you see it right here, set hidden in game NPC text. Click on this option right now. What we want to do is we want to make sure this hidden object button is unchecked. We want it to be unhidden in the game. And if we hit compile and save, you'll see what happens. So head back over to your world map, the hub world, and drop in our NPC merchant that we created. So drop him in, arrange him so he doesn't fall through the floor. So drag him up a little bit, drag him over here. That looks like it's almost in line pretty darn well. So that should be good enough. If we hit save to save the level and hit play, when we enter the level, you will see there's our little merchant dude. And when we get to him, the box pops up, welcome to the shop, press E to enter. Uh, the E to enter probably could be made a little bit bigger, but that's something we can adjust later. We can mess around with those later, we're just trying to get the functionality down right now. However, when we walk away, that stays up, and we obviously don't want that to happen. So escape out of this and open our NPC merchant back up. The next thing we need to do is on component end overlap, so that is off of this collision box right here. Right click it, add uh, event, and we're going to add end overlap right here. So literally the same exact piece of code, if you just wanted to click Control c Control v drop it in, drag off to connect these two nodes, and we want to set it hidden in game, compile save, and go ahead and check it with the play button once again. You'll see it pops up, it goes away, it pops up, it goes away. So there we go, we have basically an interaction menu that pops up when we approach the character. So the last thing we're going to do is make it so that when you hit the E key on the keyboard, it brings up a menu uh, when we approach the character, so we're going to set that up right now. And to do that, we actually need to go to our character blueprint. So you're going to want to hop over to your character blueprint, which is in the content character subfolder, and it is 2D side scroller character if you've been following along. Inside of here, pick your favorite open spot. I think we're going to go down here in the bottom left, and we're going to add the command for when we press the E key down. So to do that, just right click and type in the letter E on your keyboard and scroll down the list until you find the E key command. It should be with a whole bunch of other letters. Here it is right here, E. So after we have the E set up over here, we're going to head over to the NPC Merchant for the next portion. So head over to your NPC Merchant blueprint that we created earlier. What we want to do here is add a custom event. So right click and type in custom event. Add custom event. And that custom event we're going to call interact. So what we want to do is handle the interaction with the character, basically opening up the HUD little widget that's going to pop up to let us buy things. We're not going to do that yet in this video. We're just going to have it tank the player's health so we know that it's actually working. So just compile and save this for now, and we'll do the little health drawing mechanic first. So the first thing we want to do is before we even open up anything, we want to make sure that the player is actually close enough to the merchant and didn't like run away or do anything like that. So to do that, we're going to get the player controller, get player character, not controller, get player character, I apologize. You'll see this node right here, get player character. And then off of that get player character, we want to cast to 2D side scroller character and drag in the nodes here. So basically all we're doing is making sure that we are checking for the character that the player is playing as. So now what we want to do is check to make sure that the character is overlapping the merchant still and didn't run away. So we're going to drag off of our box. From the box we're going to drag off of the node here and we're going to type in is overlapping actor. So type in is that overlapping actor. Click that and then from as 2D side scrolling character we can drag that into this actor option right here. So basically we're just checking to make sure that the player character is overlapping that box that we created, this big box that dictates the range of our shop. Um, next thing we need to do is add a branch, so hold down B and left click to bring in a branch just like that. Drag in this node, drag in this node. So if we are overlapping that box, instead of opening the widget right now, this is where we're going to add the whole widget thing, open widget, unlock mouse, and all that crud that we've done from before. We'll do that after, uh, not in a, this video, but in a later video. But for now, we're just going to tank the player's health so we know it's working. So drag off of this cast to 2D side scroller character, and we're going to take the health node, and we're going to type set health. So we can set our health, and we're going to set it to 1. So if this is true, if we are overlapping the character, and we use this interact command, which we'll get to in a second, we're going to set the player's health to 1. So compile and save this, and head back over to the 2D side scroller character. The next thing we need to do is have an interaction box that pulls up the menu or basically says that, hey, we're overlapping the NPC. So to do that, we're going to hit box and we're just going to hit right click and duplicate. 
it's going to call itself box one but what we're going to do is call it interaction volume so now we have this thing interaction volume and what we want to do off of that box is right click add event and on component begin overlap when this interaction volume overlaps we want to check to see if it is the side the npc merchant so we're just going to type in cast to npc merchant so we're going to see if it is the npc merchant and if it is the NPC merchant, we want to run the interaction command, or the interact command. But we don't want to run it whenever we run into this, we want to run it when we hit the E key. So drag off of our E and hit the interact option. Now if we hit compile and save, and head on over to the play preview menu, we can walk up to the merchant, and the little box pops up, and when we press E, our health tanks down to 1, our health gets tanked to 1, you saw the health drop right there. If we go to the merchant, we run into the box, and then we decide now nah, we don't really want to go in there yet so we come back over here and then we press e nothing happens if we go back into the box we press e our health tanks so uh it's basically working as intended so the only other thing left to do now is actually create all of the coding for creating a widget and doing the trades with the merchant and upgrading our character and all of that great stuff so that'll be saved for a later occasion but as it stands you guys we have a little menu that we can interact in an npc for our game so if you did like this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of the other videos in this series. This is up to episode 16, so if you've missed any of them, make sure you check them out. Likewise, make sure you subscribe so you know when new videos come out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you at the next video. Peace.